Welcome to today's Money Fit Live webinar. My name is Todd Christensen, Education Manager at Money Fit and author of Everyday Money for Everyday People. Welcome to 550 degrees of the FICO score. What your FICO score means and really why it matters. We're going to go, uh, we're going to spend 15, 20 minutes talking about this. Uh, it really is something that is not taught much, if at all, in schools high schools, middle schools, colleges, and even in the programs that you might expect like uh, at uh, for accountants or for uh, financial planners may not get much of this information. So once you're done with this brief webinar, you will be the FICO score expert in your circles. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Score basics. What is a credit score? It basically tries to predict future credit behavior. It is not saying that you are a good person or a bad person, that you're responsible or not responsible, that you're trying hard or not trying hard. It has nothing to do with that. It is simply trying to predict based on past behavior, trying to predict, are you going to make your payments on time in the future? It's not meant for you as a consumer. It is a tool used, developed for, used by potential prospective lenders. But we all know how important it is, and so we all fixate on it and worry about it and lose sleep over it. That's just understand, it is not a tool for us. It helps to understand what it is, but it's really a tool for prospective lenders. It's based, as I mentioned, on past behavior. And the more recent that past behavior, the better, the more reliable that information is in predicting future behavior. It is based solely on the information found on your credit report. If something is not on your credit report, it's not a factor in your credit score, can't be. Scores are only as um, developed and factored using information that is found in your credit report through Equifax.com, Experian.com, and TransUnion.com. Those are the three Consumer reporting agencies, the main, the main ones. There are others around the country, but those are the main three. So that's where, where your credit score comes from. And you might be interested to know your income is not on your credit report, so it's not a factor in your score. Your employment, whether you're employed or unemployed, that's not on your credit report. It's not a factor in your credit score. Lots of things that a lot of people believe are in their credit score are not. So if it's not on your report, not a factor in your score. Actually, I have a whole uh, uh, MoneyFit live webinar on uh, going briefly going over some of the 132 uh, factors, the scoring codes that FICO uses to determine our credit score. Okay, there is no one FICO score. We talk about, have you checked your FICO? Do you know what your credit score is? As if there's just one credit score. There are dozens, scores of credit scores. FICO alone has more, score, more credit score versions than I can count on, on both hands. In 1998, they released FICO 98. Hey, that makes sense. 2004, FICO 04. Each time they release a new sc a score, it's got a few different codes uh, and a few different new things to consider trying to make it more and more reliable as a predictor of future credit behavior. In 2008, they released, or 2009, they released FICO 8. FICO 8 had some major changes to it. They went from having about 30 or 40 FICO score codes to 132. And that's, those, those are the, um, the factors that I go over in that other webinar. In 2014, they just went to FICO 9, 2019, they, they released Ultra FICO that not only uh, it was piloted, it just started piloting, it's not very well uh, used. Currently in 2020, FICO 8 is probably the, the most used credit score. So it's, it's already 11 years old. Why not move to the newer FICO that's supposedly more and more reliable? Because that would involve lenders having to change their internal systems to fit the new, the, the, the changes in the FICO score. For example, the Ultra FICO now can look at 
uh, balances at in your in your uh, savings accounts, your accounts. It looks at where where you're at. It's not just your crediting uh, anymore. That's uh, ultra FICO, and currently not many uh, lenders are using it. In early 2020, just just before COVID hit in 2020, FICO released its FICO 10 update, uh, claiming it's even more reliable as a predictor of future um, credit behavior. So your FICO score, this is what almost proves that the credit that a FICO score was never developed for the consumer. It's developed for the lender. Why else can how else can you explain that it starts at 300 and goes up to 850? If you were developing a credit score, wouldn't you start at zero and go to 100 or one to 10 or something a little more re um, recognizable to us? It, it's not, it was not meant for us uh, as consumers. It has a five, so it has a 550 point range. So 1% uh, of your score is equal to roughly five and a half points. That's the range. So when, if I were to say, hey, you know, you, you, every time you apply for a new a line of credit, or a new credit card, you might lose one to 2% of your score. That's five and a half to 11 points that you might be losing. That's, those are just rough estimates. Why it matters, why you should care about your FICO score, because obviously it has to do with getting the best interest rates. That's the main reason you wanna have a positive credit score is it, uh, it means that you can qualify for the lowest interest rates possible from any lender that you work with. Home loans, that's pretty much the, the or business loans, especially since they, um, early on, if you're an entrepreneur, your early business loans are gonna be tied to your personal credit. The lower your interest rate, the less money you pay over time. But also, you get better repayment terms, uh, more flexibility sometimes. Your insurance premiums, car insurance, homeowner's insurance, life insurance, renter's insurance, those can be tied, at least in part, to your credit score. Apartment applications, many apartment complexes and pro uh, property managers will, will just tell you flat out when you call them and ask them how to apply for, uh, uh, submit an application to, to live there, they'll say, look, don't even bother if you don't have a 680 or a 650 or a, 60, a 703, whatever. They get to set their own uh, range because they assume, and it's fairly reasonable, they're going to it's good to assume that if you are a low risk for missing payments in the future, you're, you're also going to be a low risk for missing rent payments in the future. Now, some people have heard that credit is involved in job applications and, and the hiring process. Yes, credit is. No credit scores are not. Just your credit uh, on parts of your credit report or credit history. Your credit scores are not used in your in any kind of job application. Okay, let's let's break down uh, some of the things here about what is a good credit score, or excellent credit. Well, good luck trying to figure that out, right? Because if you go to Experian or you go to FICO, they're going to have charts saying that exceptional credit is 800 plus. So you assume, hey, well, if I, if I have excellent credit, I have to have 800 plus. And you can find out elsewhere that, hey, 800 plus means you are in the top 10% of credit uh, credit score, people with credit scores. Not everybody has a credit score. If you don't have enough information on your report to generate a reliable predictor, you may not have a credit score. Bills.com says credit good credit score is 750 on up. NerdWallet says it's in the 720 on up. Barclay, one of the, the, the largest uh, lenders, banks in the, in the world, says 700 plus. Which, which one do you go with? That's the thing is credit score, what is excellent credit, is not a number. You cannot fix. These are just rough guesses, estimates, uh, just for us to know more or less, hey, this is going to be good credit, bad credit. But it really changes from lender to lender. Okay? Excellent credit is basically decided, determined on an individual creditor basis. It is this. This is the best this is the best definition, I'll just say it out there, uh, that's out there that we have developed what good, excellent credit is. It's the, it's the score at which you get the best terms with that lender that you're applying with. 
the lender sets the excellent score range. Meaning uh, one lender, uh, you can apply for two different lenders, a loan from two different lenders. This lender over here says, if you have a seven uh, 690, you'll get our best interest rates and best repayment terms. This lender over here says, oh no, uh, with us, you have to have a 770, really high credit score. Well, anything above 770 for that creditor is excellent credit. Anything above a 690 with this creditor over here is excellent credit. So whether you have a 770 with either one, or you have an 810 or an 820, it doesn't matter. You're going to get the best interest rates possible. The only thing the higher score gets you is bragging rights with your friends. And I can almost guarantee that nobody wants you to brag about your credit scores. So that's what excellent credit is. It's just the score at which you will qualify for the best interest rates with that lender. All right. Here are some of the specific. Here are some of the specifics. You go if you apply for a uh, FHA loan, they're going to want a 690 or higher in order to get their best interest rates. Quicken loan, Home Loans currently, they're saying a 740 or higher. Chase Sapphire Card says about 670 or higher. Um, American Express, uh, six, uh, also 670. The City Double Cash Card requires a 740, but you look at a Credit One Platinum Card, sounds pretty good, right? That's a card that's specifically for people with terrible credit. 300 plus, 300 meaning that's the lowest potential score you could ever get. They will basically uh, almost qualify anybody, but that, they're going to charge extremely high interest rates probably. And this is all based on a uh, bank rate comparison from, from July 2020. You can go to bank rate and look at comparisons and, and say, hey, what kind of cards can you get at such and such a credit loan, uh, credit score? Minimum. Some, some lenders actually have a minimum credit score below which they consider you just have terrible credit. So just like there is no real fixed excellent credit score, there's no real fixed terrible credit score. FHA says generally if you're below eight, six, uh, 580, we're going to probably not qualify you. But even then, they can. Uh, there are some programs that will allow you to get a, 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 along with them all the way down to 500. 500 is territory where people who have just filed for bankruptcy, they're going to find their credit scores typically in that 485 to 515 range right after filing for bankruptcy. So that's a pretty credit challenged score. The VA, if you're a veteran and you're applying for a home loan, they say, oh, 6, 620 is our lowest score, but they can sometimes even go down to 580. Uh, the Department of Agriculture uh, has uh, rural development uh, loans to buy homes and they'll say 640 or, or higher is what you need. But if you go to a Wells Fargo car loan and they're saying you, it's got to be a 680. Everybody, every lender gets to choose a different um, excellent credit score and a, diff and a different minimum credit floor on their score scores. And then keep this in mind, when you're applying for a home loan, you'll go in and that lender will uh, check all three credit reports. And in this example, you might say, okay, 653, 658, and a 715. You've got that 715 outline way up there high. And so you might think, hey, well, the average is going to be, it's got to be somewhere in the 680, 670 range, right? Uh, and that's going to make a difference because some of those lenders are going to look for the 670, 680, 690, 690 score. But that's not how most lenders do it. What most mortgage lenders do is they just take, they throw out the high score, they throw out the low score, and you stuck with the middle score so that you had two scores really low right next to each other. It's pretty, it's, you're pretty much stuck with the low score. That's how it works. That's why you want to take, uh, take advantage of opportunity to build your credit, to get rid of errors so that your credit score is going to go up and all, at all three of those uh, consumer reporting agencies. That's it. If you found something beneficial in this information, please click the like button with this webinar. And then we would love it if you would please subscribe to our channel so we can let you know of upcoming uh, events and, and uh, webinars. Plus, it tells, tells YouTube, hey, this sort of content from MoneyFit is beneficial. Get it out there to other people looking for it. It helps in those search results. If you would like a certificate of completion, it's free. 
you don't have to pay for it. it just, uh, we're not, you don't put yourself on any kind of mailing list. Just go to moneyfit.org slash live, put in your name, how you want it on your certificate. You uh, enter in your email where you want it sent. Then you will choose the uh, 550 degrees of the FICO score from November of 2020. It'll pop up with a, a box asking for this passcode. Degrees 1120. No, keep keep them all lowercase, no capital letters, D-E-G-R-E-E-S-1120. No spaces, no dashes, no dots, no nothing. Then if there's anything we can help you, if you have questions, if you need to talk a situation over about your credit, if we don't have the answer, we'll get you to somebody who might help, uh, resources that can help. Call us, contact us. That's what we're here for. We're a nonprofit credit counseling agency here for you when you need us. There's my phone number and email address. I'll look forward to hearing from you. Otherwise, have yourself a great day. I wish you all the best.